Islam, like all religions, is divided into two major branches, Sunni Islam and Shia Islam. Most of the Muslims, the majority of Muslims, belong to Sunni Islam. About 85% of Muslims are Sunni Muslims. They live everywhere, including the United States. In fact, if you go to a mosque here in Philadelphia, uh, it's probably 99% chance that you will go into a Sunni mosque. Sunna means tradition. Sunni Islam means traditional Islam. And there is one small group of people who call themselves Shia Muslims. Shia means a separate party. About 10% of Muslims are Shia Muslims. <coughs> and the main Shia country in Islam is Iran. Shia Muslims also live in Iraq, in Syria. They live in other countries, but um, the uh, Shia population in Syria, Iraq, uh, is one of the problems uh, with these countries. Because Sunni and Shia Muslims were always in conflict with each other, in competition with each other. Now, when it comes to beliefs, Shia and Sunni Muslims are pretty much the same. They all believe in one God. They all believe that Muhammad is God's prophet, latest prophets, prophet. They all believe in the Quran. But the main difference between Sunni and Shia is in the way Muhammad's successor was chosen. And uh, who Muhammad's successor was and should have been. Sunni Muslims accept the tradition that says that Muhammad did not appoint his successor. And therefore, his successor was chosen by his companions. And these successors were called the four righteous caliphs. According to Shia Muslims, Muhammad did appoint his successor before he died. And his legitimate successor was Ali, the fourth righteous caliph. That is the first difference. The second difference is what do Sunni and Shia Muslims understand by succession. According to Sunni Islam, the successor of Muhammad or the caliph is first and foremost the head of the political state. According to Shia Islam, the true successor of Muhammad was both, or should have been both, the head of the political state and the head of religion. And they have a special term for this person, the Imam. In Sunni Islam, Imam is a prayer leader. In Shia Islam, Imam is this special person who was appointed by Muhammad himself and who should have been the political as well as the religious leader of the community, which means that this Imam should have had the right to interpret the scriptural texts and his interpretations should have been authoritative. So uh, while Sunni Muslims accept the four righteous caliphs as legitimate successors to Muhammad, Shia Muslims accept only one, Ali, as the truly legitimate successor, as the Imam. And furthermore, Shia Muslims believe that uh, this succession of Imams, succession of legitimate successors of Muhammad, both religious and political, will continue until there would come a time in the end of days 
when the so-called 12th Imam, or the last Imam, would appear and would renew religion. And here comes an apocalyptic tradition within the Shia Islam that talks about the end of days and the coming of the Muslim Messiah, the 12th Imam. Now, what would be the characteristic features of that person or of those persons? Let me introduce to you two terms that belong to this apocalyptic tradition. The first one is Mahdi. The second one is Al-Qaim. The literal meaning of the term Mahdi is the rightly guided one. The literal meaning of the term Qaim or Al-Qaim is the one who rises up, the one who stands up. So according to the Shia apocalyptic tradition, in the end of days, Jesus will come for the second time. And that is another surprise. Jesus will come for the second time and uh, he uh, will um, destroy the churches and the synagogues. He will destroy the unbelievers. And um, he will stand behind this Mahdi person, the Muslim Messiah. And the, the Mahdi comes. And the Mahdi will do two things. He will redress the injustice that was done to the house of Muhammad. And that means that he will address the issue of the split between the Sunni and the Shia Muslims. When the Sunni Muslims, you know, went their own way and the Shia Muslims who believed that they were, they were right, although in the minority. So he will redress this injustice that was done to the house of Muhammad and to Ali. And he will usher in the universal peace and brotherhood, very much like the Jewish Mashiach in Jewish belief. So um, if such a person comes, it will be the first coming for the Jews, the second coming for the Christians, and their own coming for the Muslims. If we are thinking that this will be one and the same person. 